Okay, well, here we are. Um, welcome, everybody, to the Elevated Podcast. Um, this is our episode two, and we have a special guest today. Um, we have Canna Kitty with us. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. It has uh, been a nice little chat. We've been trying not to uh, talk too much uh, before this because we were giving so much away. Um, but uh, yeah, here we go. Need a light of doobie first. Sweet. Obviously start this out. But um, why don't we get started and just why don't you start telling us uh, just a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you're doing right now, and then uh, we'll dive back into, um, you know, your cannabis history, how you found cannabis, okay. and uh, all the awesome schooling you're doing and stuff right now. For sure. So uh, yeah, give us a rundown on who Canna Kitty is in 2020. Okay, so I'm Canna Kitty, and I am a... a promote on Instagram and I started doing a few years ago because I kind of liked the idea that I could get to know other people and network and right now I uh, full-time though I work and you know as an everyday industry person in the canvas industry of course yeah for a big LP one of the 200 so you'll never know (laughs) but it's it's a big one and um, I'm an inventory control specialist so that's fun I data log on a computer which Basically, it's just entry. Bring and the ex- mic a little closer. I'm sorry, yeah. It's all good. Data- <laughs> the sweet spot. <laughs> the <laughs> sweet spot. I, I data log the entry and exit of cannabis, basically. Yeah. Okay. And it, it's cool. It's fun. And it's I like it because it's a straightforward job. And I, 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 I get paid some good money. And because I have a degree, it's also like, it's nice. <laughs> totally, totally. And yeah. why don't you tell everyone what your, your uh, degree is in? So I do have a degree in general sciences, and I obtained it from the University of Lethbridge, and that's a really great university. It's a very beautiful, beautiful city to live in. And I, I did, like, geography, and I took some agricultural soils and soil management, and I'm, I'm really interested in renewable energy and climate change sciences, and a bunch of those things together have really, like, created a, like, a big idea in my head that I'd like to achieve in the future. Yeah, and we're going to get to that uh, closer to the end of this. She has uh, some pretty exciting stuff she wants to do in the cannabis industry, and uh, we're going to dive into that. But first, like, uh, let's go step back. Um, tell us about just like um, how you first discovered cannabis. So for me, I started using cannabis when I was 21. So I had actually already been in like my s- finishing my second year of university. And well, at that point, I was kind of like, oh, C's get degrees. But I. C's went, get degrees? Yeah. What's that? Like? Uh, it's like a saying that sometimes uh, university students will say that all you, because all you really need is to get a C grade average to pass university. Okay. And so, like, I was at a point where I wasn't really doing well and I didn't know what I wanted to do and I wasn't feeling like I was doing anything. And I was going home for the summer uh, back to Radium Hot Springs, which is actually where I'm from and I grew up. And I, my brother was already a cannabis user, and he's a couple years younger than me. And he, yeah, we started smoking weed together and just having bomb-ass times, ripping around in my car in the boonies. He was a couple <laughs> years younger than you, too, Yeah, right? yeah. He's, my brother's like, I uh, he, guess he's 25 now. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm 27. And, uh, yeah, we started smoking weed together. And then I came back to university still smoking weed, but I began using it in a very beneficial way. I used it to focus. And I used it to study. And I actually ended up the semester after going back to university and really using it on Dean's List with, like, straight A's. What? Okay. So yeah. that's that's really impressive. Tell me, like, because, like, most people struggle, like, I mean, to get hit the books sometimes when they're smoking up. How did you find that focus? Was it a specific I, strain? Was it just... I mean, you... no, because at that point in time, I was just getting my weed from my regular, you know, street dealer and, like... You don't really, sometimes you don't really know what you're getting, but I'm going to be honest, during that time, we were smoking a lot of Pineapple Express. Pineapple Express, okay. that was coming through a lot in Lethbridge, and I was smoking a lot of it, and I guess maybe that could have been a really beneficial strain for me. Interesting. Now, what do you generally lean towards for strains? I like Indicas, though. Yeah, more Indicas. Honestly, that's fascinating. But I found that I would go study. Uh, Like, sometimes we would have these ones where we'd be given at, at the topics, and we would know, and we'd have to study them and then go regurgitate them on an exam. So I would sit there, I'd get really stoned, I'd study, 
and then I'd probably get really stoned then and go regurgitate it on the exam. Whoa, that's incredible. <laughs> Cause like, yeah, it's so like counterintuitive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> geez. And like, it must've been a high CBD strain or something like that. Like, I don't, I don't know. know. Like I'm telling you, I wasn't, it was still the time of not as easy access to knowing what you're smoking. And now you do know what you're smoking a lot more and it at least sometimes yeah so, totally totally yeah. okay so and like how did your brother get find weed like he was younger than you um, like how do you introduce like big sister to cannabis <laughs> uh well my i don't know like i was from radium hot springs and some i don't know drugs and other stuff too is you know like a little bit more predominant there oh, so okay. i feel like the access to cannabis was just there Fair. and plus he knew he was friends with uh someone who also had a father who was a medical patient oh nice. so like okay. i feel like they had access to it, so then in turn he had access to it. My brother nice. was also in a car accident. We were both in a car accident in 2006, and I think he also started using it to help with his, um, like his pain and his his like what he needed it for. Fair, okay. And so like he was using it, and so because he was using it, I I used it because he was the person I hung out with. Okay, cool. My brother and I became really close after I left to university and stuff. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So your brother hooked you up, got you all focused on the cannabis. Yeah. Found, you found out oh, cannabis is awesome and kicks ass. Yeah. So, um, like, how did you choose these courses though? Like you started smoking cannabis, like before you even got into the university, like how did you pr plan out this like cannabis trajectory for like your future? Cause this definitely took some forethought. Okay. So like I, s I started taking courses that I felt would be relevant to me in the cannabis industry. And like, well, I started out with taking analytical chemistry and uh, organic chemistry and I wasn't really excelling as much in those and I took some geography courses and I was like oh I really like this I really have a passion for renewable energy actually you know what Th that that starts at high school high school that started okay. at high school okay. the initial idea of wanting to be part of renewable energy which is something that involves my whole cannabis and everything together but what I'm from D Invermere and Radium, and we have a small high school called DTSS, and we had the opportunity to have a small greenhouse that is you which uses renewable energy and solar panels, so solar panels, and subterranean geothermal energy oh, exchange to yeah, to heat yeah. it. And so I was really interested in that. And then when I became interested in cannabis, I was like, um, this could be a really great thing if we could have renewable energy greenhouse glass greenhouse growing cannabis um because we do do a lot of indoor growth but we need we can still control the environment and use a glass greenhouse or a greenhouse where we can get the natural light too because mm -hmm. i feel like we could grow cannabis and utilize like really great using every like using the natural stuff we have but we but we want to be able to control it like we do in indoors totally so, totally which the greenhouse is which, obviously yeah and but then i want to do it net zero sustainably renewable energy okay so like that that's basically my ultimate goal in life is to even if it's on a m small micro cultivation scale mm -hmm. just to prove that i could maybe grow ren like net zero cannabis and i know there would be a niche market for that oh uh, yeah so i could like yeah. and then i'm also interested in like the analytics can you of explain it? to people what net zero uh cannabis like growing okay. would be because a lot of people aren't super familiar so, with like um one, once again just like even renewable energy well not okay. renewable energy but yeah give them a rundown so, so net zero growing would be growing a product that wouldn't uh, would have a lesser carbon pr footprint or even footprint using electricity and like components to grow cannabis like air filtration um humidity all that uses electricity which then in turn uses um has a carbon p footprint and of course there's all these different like transportation pollution and all that that's involved with large-scale production and i just i would really like to see that not be an impact so things like using geothermal energy and using like what the earth can do which is like they can store latent heat and um and it, we can also use it to like yeah, we can use it so to the store geo, latent heat. The geothermal heat, though, give people a rundown on that because that's probably the most fascinating and one of the, probably the most underutilized uh, yeah. resources so for like energy. So, like, Canada actually has, like, large areas with high geothermal fluxes, too. 
And like geothermal doesn't even need to be like a really high, like all earth can contain and hold heat mm -hmm. geothermally. And can you explain to them like just how a hotspot works like underground like that, like and how they locate that? <sighs> like just roughly, just even just, like, uh, just so people can kind of get an idea. Well, you, okay, so like you geotherm, like you can find, they use like a infrared, different types of uh, high frequency uh radar to, to totally. be able to detect to isolate those hot spots yeah and then they drill into and the hot spots hot, and then what they can do is they can actually pump it could be either pumping air or water through into th into the ground through like tubing and then um then they cycle it through oops, cycling it through so that like it's picking up that like that area of heat mm -hmm. and like but geothermal can also be used like like in up in iceland there's geothermal and the hot like all those hot springs so like there's even like like using the geothermal hot water to also power stuff like there, it, there's many different types of geothermal in different ways that like you can use the word geothermal because it's using the earth to heat totally yeah, yeah and yeah. I, i've always really knew like the ones that like you drill on you found the hot, whatever yes. but very interesting yeah. so um okay so Zero, I guess we sort of covered that. Yeah. Now, that's what you would like to apply to growing methods in the future and yeah, bringing sure. down, yeah, like, I mean, every grower's down with bringing down that electri electricity bill, right? Yeah, exactly, um, yeah. So you got inspired um, in high school yep. for renewable energy. You said you, renewable energy, that's it. I want to yeah. go with that. Um, I want to eventually make my own grow micro growery yep. um, using renewable energy. So now I'm going to go off to university. How do you pick like uh, the classes to um, to take for this? Because it is a few different like renewable energy and then geography. Well, you need well, botany. It, start, it started out first with me just trying to get a degree of some sort, and it was first it started with just a chemistry degree. That's what I was going to do, Kay. and then when I did get introduced introduced to uh, cannabis, that's when things started to be like, okay, I need to start taking courses that would be more reflective of the things that I would need to do to achieve what I wanted because there weren't any courses or anything available yet at that point in time for me to actually go take if I wanted to be in the production. And like, I, I have always had the interest of cultivation, but I've never really, I've, I don't cultivate now and I haven't really had the opportunity to cultivate. Maybe like I've tried to grow once, but I'm waiting for the pr opportunity where I can have what I need to do it. I don't want to like do it in all like, you know, mishmash, try and grow something <laughs> together. Totally, totally. But so I started like going, okay, what kind of courses would ap help ap help apply me? Um, I was like, I like renewable energy. So let's take all the different geography court. Well, first I also had to pay make my streams and you have to take very specific types of courses and you have to take certain levels to achieve your degree. Okay, like, this is for like, olds? Uh, sorry, no, this is at, at University of Lethbridge. Uh, Lethbridge uh, yeah. Like you have to take 1000 classes, which are first, second, third, fourth year classes. Mm -hmm. You just have a certain amount. So I started looking at how, what courses were available and that would apply for me. So I took, I took these agricultural soil management courses, which applied to my geography stream, which is my main stream. And I had to have like, I think it was like 14 or 15 courses for that okay. or something like that. And I was like, okay, this will apply to me. This will help me with, uh, with growing in the future. So this is why I'm going to take this. And then I took uh, geography because I was, because I ha I took all these geology courses and stuff too. But like I, f I found that learning about the rocks and stuff also gave me the opportunity to learn about ge geothermal energy. And then I took cool. glaciology and there's all these different mm. things that overlapped that like just started making me be like, oh, like this is all these small elements and certain things I'm drawing from these courses are going to help me in the future. I even took a um, geographical information sciences course. And I also wrote another Co a paper applying to cannabis on talking about how we can use spectral frequency and um, infrared uh, infrared radar to look at how cannabis is grown based on how it reflects the it, they reflect a certain freak uh, like frequency signature and you can actually like um, detect how good that plant is growing based on how red it is or what? yeah and I was I wrote a bit what? of a paper on that. Yeah, it's, there's some interesting... What kind of machine is this that, like... Well, no, like, it's, like, you will you can use planes or even dr a, a little droid. Oh, we uh, unplugged the mic there. I'm so sorry. There you go. You're good now. Um, You know, like, dr drones, sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could fly drones over that have, the ca like, the right cameras. Oh, it's a type of camera. Yeah, like, infrared cool. cameras and okay. stuff. And I wrote about that, and 
I also that's got a really good grade on that paper, which that is, is nice. Yeah. So you're looking for certain, like, can you just elaborate a little bit more on that? So you're looking for like, like uh, let's say a plant is in veg or in flower, you're looking for a specific color spectrum on that plant, and that will yeah, dictate sure. the whatever. Yeah, uh, for sure. So like, um, plants give plants reflect uh, infrared rays, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's like they reflect in red, and then they reflect in other colors, and like certain colors mean certain things so the more red it is i believe the healthier the crop was is that in ve is that in veg now or is that in uh, well, flower or i can't run? say anything more because there hasn't hasn't really been any studies or uses on cannabis yet this okay. is me saying this is how we could use geographical information sciences on the cannabis industry. oh okay so this is my like research and proposal so i took other papers like there's this is already used in agricultural crops like um when you go to like precision a agriculture and farmer's edge and stuff like that they mm -hmm. use stuff like this to look at their crops i mean and this is huge for mass agriculture right because yeah. then you're, you're you're looking at so hundreds of hectares or thousands of hectares of so uh, even hemp ex like hemp, sorry, hemp hemp growing wow oh because like, like hemp's going to be used for extraction definitely in the future too so like Undo they can yeah so no that's huge yeah, honestly like, i never even because that's something that's applicable 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 appl oh my god applicable. applicable applicable right now um oh shit i need another joint and I'm loose up the brain going, oh, here i'm gonna i'm yeah. gonna take this dab yeah get a dab here we need to loosen up the neurons here <laughs> Um, no, but that's that's tech that's applicable um, yeah. to to current day farming methods, which mm -hmm. is like big hemp. I mean, China could be uh, putting this technology to use right now and probably save them themselves uh, yeah. billions of dollars in um, you know making a more quality product. And hemp cannabis also has like a lot of phytoremediative properties, so like they're phytoremediative. Really, uh, Phyto, so multiples. Like it can well no, like it uh, can uptake a lot of stuff from the uh, soil. Okay. So like heavy metal toxicity and stuff. Apparently what is fight? What's the definition of like phyto? I can't remember. Yeah, I'm okay. gonna be honest. I just okay. I'm pulling one of those fancy words out of my brain. I know. Right I now love it. That I can't remember exactly what it means, but I remember reading it in one of the research papers. Okay. And that's why I chose to uh, kind of like mention it, because uh, I also feel like cannabis and hemp can be used like in more ways, like to like even just clean our soil and uptake it, and then we could be using these crops to. Uh, sorry. Hold on a second. Yeah, go ahead. Take a puff. Yeah, of course. So that's also an another in interesting fact that a lot of people don't talk about is that cannabis actually lifts toxins and heavy metals up from the ground. It can actually literally clean, clean, uh, you know, tarnish, tarnish soil. Um, this cannab cannabis plant is an incredible plant. Um, now, I, I'm sure Canna Kitty can probably um, let us know a few interesting methods after her dabs of like how you can use cannabis to clean soil. But um, yeah, some very interesting stuff. Very powerful yeah. plant. So like, like my thought is like different. Uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, like if you're well, like what up? <laughs> um, like different, like even different farms like that are having issues with their soil could be growing like hemp rotation crops. And then like even they could even be using those crops to like further... Sorry, further. You can bring it a little closer too. Just you, if you want, just get natural with it. You can pull it back and forth okay. too. Like um, you got it in a good position now, so you know. Um, but yeah, keep on going. So like, even if the okay, current farmers could be rotating hemp in to help with certain 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 things, even if they need to like remediation of their soil in general, I think. Okay. And like even if they have a high metal toxicity or even any type of issue with their soil, like I still think though there needs to be studies done on how it affects the plant for, cause like those plants probably could be used for further extraction or further production or further processing, but mm -hmm. it's just whether or not they're still safe to be used after being up after uptaking heavy metal metals and stuff too. Totally. I mean that, that, yeah, that's, that, that's pretty gnarly. And I mean, kind of like a cool, um, like even if that is the case, like, let's say they are full of heavy metals and we don't want to uh, uptake them or whatever, um, we always got the option to make rope, right? Or oh, yeah, like, like fibrous yeah, materials. Yeah, totally. Good point. You know, yep. maybe bags, maybe um, well, hempcrete. We've got like hempcrete, going on. yo. And there's even like hemp hemp cat litter. Hem cat litter right, too. Yeah. Oh my there's god, they got it all. It's comfy here in Alberta. I'm pretty sure that doesn't. So there you go. Yeah. You can use the. the you go clean your soil, take all that toxic hemp, and, you know, resell that for, you know, a bunch of, make cat litter, go make some bricks out of it, and make yeah. yourself uh, some houses. Wouldn't that be the future, right? Like hemp, hemp built houses out of, uh, yeah, hemp fibers. Well, it's supposed to be wasn't there a hemp house at one of the last hemp fests? 
Um, I don't, uh, I don't recall. Oh. I don't recall. There was a hemp house. Very fascinating. Small, small mini hemp house. Um, fair, fair, fair. Um, yeah, hemp is the future, but like, I mean, so much fascinating stuff. And I'm, I'm so, the interesting thing is I was shocked at, uh, like, uh, like I knew Canada Kitty was working for a big company, um, out here. And like, we've met once, I think just once before this. Yeah. Um, so like she was really great to chat with, but I just never knew uh, how knowledgeable she was about all these soils and all this stuff. So this yeah. is, uh, this is just great. Um, but I would love to, uh, yeah, let's dive back into, um, school and, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah, like, so you, you whatever, um, you, you chose your classes, you went for, um, what was the primary or the main? So my main was geography. So geography. I had to take a bunch of courses that were in the geography stream because you have to choose between certain ones. So I started taking um, s- agricultural soil management and soil and soil sciences so I could have an understanding of soils and how soils can be nurtured and used to grow things because I really wanted to learn to cultivate because I want to learn to grow cannabis so that I can, you know, achieve my dream. I want to grow cannabis. I want to grow net zero, but I want to be doing it too. Like, because even if it becomes a bigger company, I want to be able to pass on the knowledge that makes the company, uh, you know, unique to the people below me. So yeah. And then I took a botany course. I actually took a field botany course so I learned a lot about floral anatomy, which I needed to know about cannabis. So, so tell us a little bit about the floral anatomy, because that's, um, I know, I can't say I know much about. So within your floral anatomy, you have like male or female um, flowers, or you can have uh, flowers that... Diaceous are, species? Di- yep. Yeah, or... Um, at, oh. See, it's so long ago since I've taken it, and I'm a stoner, so... Uh, <laughs> it's all good. It's all um, good. Whatever comes up. But then you've got, like, you learn about your, like, carpels and your uh, sepals and What's your... What's a carpel? Um, it's a... The carpel is part of um, the the female anatomy of a flower. Okay. Um, And I believe they're part of, if I remember, the stamen and the stigma. Yeah, which stamen it, which and Which you're going to know that if you anyone knows about cannabis, those are some important words. Totally, totally. Um, and we, we need those female yeah. parts. Um, And, yeah, so I was like, well, I can't learn about cannabis, so I'm going to learn about flowers. So that's what I did, and I took this field botany course. But I'm going to be honest, it was a summer course. There, I had to do some, flor- some flower collecting and identification, and it involved me having to go on some adventures. And I... Just it, it didn't. It, I didn't do very good in the field part of the class, mm-hmm. but the book part and the test part was really good and really. I really enjoyed the knowledge of it. Fair, yeah. yeah. So, well, I, yeah. that would take time to get to get good at recognizing like different species of plant. Like, how do you learn that in a summer? Like, uh, yeah, because there's many. Like, I, I can remember some like Caryophyllaceae, and then of course you got cannabis, which is cannabinaceae, and of course cannabis and hops are actually in the same family. Yes, yes so it's really interesting, interesting, and yeah. I. I like that, and then and I have this like book. It's like the floral anatomy of Alberta, and it's interesting to see that cannabis was even in that book. Whoa! Yeah. Okay, interesting. It. Yeah, go Canada yeah. for being a little. Uh, yeah, and then of course we we have our canola here, and that's yes, the canola's a big one family so it's cool what's the fabiaceae family all about leguminaceae it's like basically the pea family they're all the peas are all feet peas oh it's so interesting yeah Yeah, i like so interesting so yeah and then i took some resource management to learn a little bit more about um environmental resource management i guess but just was interested in the environment and things like that i took a took some um physics and some astronomy so like i know a little bit about the stars but not like excessive amounts okay and yeah because yeah, and but yeah i just tried physics is a fun one yeah it's <laughs> well it's not like the easiest one but no. you know at, at least the basics of physics is fun <laughs> anything I, beyond the basics is not that fun <laughs> i i just made it through those physics courses i bet yeah it, it, it that is uh that is a mindful yeah but yeah and then I wrote um, that cannabis paper, and one of the profs really liked it. And at the end of the summer, he messaged me, or the beginning of the summer, he messaged me, and he's like, "Uh, hey, I'd really like to talk to you about your paper. It really surprised me. I think I have a job opportunity for you. Whoa. And I ended up getting a job in McGrath for this research and development job, and they were trying to start a next-generation greenhouse down there. 
and um, basically was part of research and development team. I got to learn a little bit more about deep water culture, and we grew some lettuce, and um, I did some research on uh, just different renewable uh, energy applications and trying to understand more about the concept of how we would use geothermal, but I was, we were struggling. Um, I did a lot of studying on polyculture. What were you guys struggling with? Like, what was the... Um, just, well, just because we were just didn't understand, we weren't given a lot of information of what was going on for the actual geothermal. Like it was being built by or being done by another company. What was this whole next gen project? Can you just sort of um, like give a rough overview Yeah, it was on called it? Like, Star Produce. Yeah. And um, it was supposed to be a uh, a greenhouse that used, um, it wasn't a, it wasn't a glass greenhouse. It was going to use a different type of technology that would allow both the UVB and UVA light in. So it, you, you could be able to support a whole biological system inside the greenhouse. Why? What's the difference between like that well, system and a normal system? Bees and uh, like some certain types of uh, like biologic, biological like groups like bees and stuff mm -hmm. don't can't like live without uvb or you one of the two i can't remember if it's uv or uba mm -hmm. so like so they can't go into the greenhouse a normal greenhouse yeah and they can't survive without like in the ecosystem basically so okay. like so there's certain things aspects of um of an ecosystem that uh need certain light or certain wavelength lengths of light and stuff no way okay cool and, and certain things so that i guess sort of like a canvas plant needs yeah. like a lot of uh, red light in like uh, flower and a lot of blue light and veg yeah to and so basically it was okay. it would be like a creating a whole ecosystem that could support like an outside ecosystem but inside whoa and being like completely micromanaged or like you know so you would have the bees in that system yeah, too like you of. would introduce all the but you never let it out of that system kind either of, kind of yeah Whoa, and it would that's be, cool and then it would be like a polydome thing which are there's some things like that that exist somewhere in europe i think cool and basically they wanted to also do polyculture which would be using um growing in ways like there's these things called three sisters which um the mesopotamian mesopotamians would use with it's like corn beans and maize okay. and they grow together um symbiotically yeah okay. um, and, um, and promote each other in a way like to help like the squash or the the may well, no sorry i just said that wrong it's squash beans and maize okay so like the squash helps ni they fixate nitrogen and also um cover no sorry yeah they're the ground cover and then the beans or the peas is the f a nitrogen fixation plant and they grow up the corn and the corn is the tall plant which would be which will benefit from the ground cover and the nitrogen fixi fixation of that powerful the, and so like there's lots of different systems of different plants that grow together uh and then also negate each other totally totally so we i was learning about that and stuff and there's a really awesome book called carrots love tomatoes or something like that i think okay. I, I, ha I own it it's really good and it's a whole book on polyculture and how to grow a garden together and and with beneficials and stuff and like you can grow different herbs and even different like um like nasturtiums and different types of um just uh regular flowers to mm -hmm. help promote different different species of uh you know even birds or insects in your garden and stuff or certain things like even negate deer and totally it's really cool there, yeah. and, and really this is the future of growing uh for those of you guys aware uh polyculture is just a fancy way of saying organic living soil um like this this is the future um yeah. uh living soil is um produces like we were talking about earlier just the most dynamic terpene profiles in cannabis the most unique looking bud structures in cannabis um the the most full uh trichome production in cannabis it's all about the living soil yeah. and that uh and that polyculture and uh what polyculture is is just mixing different plants and microorganisms uh together um so they benefit and work with with the plant um this way it gives greater expressions of specific terpenes and flavonoids in the plant um super 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 powerful um i mean you can go ahead and do hydroponics and all this other stuff and you can add all this stuff in yourself and you can still make a really good plant however there is something to be said of uh you know you know letting nature do nature um yeah. and i'm from i don't know i all the pot that i've smoked um 
I seem to really be more attracted to the organic living soil as opposed to the hydroponics or regular soil or stuff that's been, you know, just ran, riddled with nutrients, which nutrients isn't bad. I have zero nutrients is totally fine. All you're doing is just giving the same vitamins to a plant in a different way. I just seem to prefer the organic living soil and the polyculture sort of way a little bit more. And I think it's just the way to go. Like, mm-hmm. let's get back to, uh, let's go back to our roots. Um, yeah. And yeah, and do things, you know, as organically as possible because it's less work. It's also less money. Yeah, like, and I'm just saying you could, like, if everybody was changing their lawns over from that, because lawn, a lawn is the worst water consumption, consumptive, like, thing ever. We could be turning our lawns, growing our own food, feeding ourselves for way longer and whoa. more. Like, there's there's some... Down on one of the streets in Lethbridge, there's a there's a family that does that. I've seen them do it like their whole front year. yard is just a oh yeah, just they, fucking. They <laughs> they do, and I've seen them do like a very like they do corn and they they definitely rotate it in a very specific way. I'm pretty sure Smart. so they must practice a very specific way to. And those of you guys th- who don't know too, you never want to plant the same crop in the soil because it'll drain the soil of like all the nutrients. So you yeah. always want to be switching up crops um, so you're not uh, depleting your uh, soil and nutrients because you can literally destroy your ground. Because like I said, different legumes, they help fixate nitrogen into your soil. So it's like you, you're rotating. And Explain so to everyone like the importance of nitrogen for plants because oh this is like gosh. the most, this is like the number, like honestly, if, the, if there's only one thing you learn about this podcast and you grow weed, it's just knowing about nitrogen. Okay, so there's like the barrel of limitations. Do you know Do you know anything about that? Uh, please do uh, elaborate because so like I do the barrel, not. So like in soil science, there's this thing called the barrel of limitations where it's like a barrel and they kind of make it show like each of the panels of the barrel and each barrel, each of those panels go to a different level. And um, um, if um, they fall between, like, and each uh, macro and micro element have a certain level. And if one falls below that level, um, the rest of them do their job. So it's like, basically, I feel like, I think nitrogen is the one that's the most, has the lowest limitation. So, like, if nitrogen can't fixate, then none of the other nutrients that need to move around in the plant or yeah or can do its job and i'm i'm sorry but like i haven't been able to apply my soil sciences because i input data Uh, and that's the biggest (laughs) thing uh, is about going to university is you take a lot of things but you can only apply those things when you're applying yourself i know that is very tricky right like so like that i really love the soil science I even did a rap for my soil science. What well, you did a rap for your soil I science? Ro- well, I didn't do it, but I wrote a. R- I like. I like you know like I. What do you call it? I yeah, I, I made a rap. That's yeah. awesome. Because we had and I did. A I wish we had that rap. I wish we had that rap right oh, now. It's in my email somewhere. That's too funny. Yeah, but so, uh, so what? When did you write that? Was that for like the end of the year thing? That was no, no. We had like a mid, mid. It was for my agricultural soil management course. So this one, so the first si- part of the course is like soil sciences. So that's where you actually learn about the types of soils and uh, that are there are, um, like from your, uh, uh, from your, uh, ge- uh, I'm trying to think of the different soil types. Well, actually, right tell now. you what, let's talk about um, wh- like how you actually got into like getting this gig, like because you fin- you graduated um, okay, yeah. university. How did you actually get into like working for a legal cannabis com- company? So after okay, so after university, I actually took a job at uh, Whole Leaf, mm-hmm. uh, which is uh, Inspired Greens Lettuce, so the Living Lettuce Company, and I worked on the sew line and worked my way as an operator through the robots and then up as an inventory lead there. Okay. And I uh, got What's a sew line? What's the sew line So it's basically like a big, everything's really automated. So basically I was a quality control most of the time, but Uh. I I had, I changed out the seed. I made sure the peat was the right moisture. I I ran a, a machine called the, I, uh, the destacker that uh, actually destack these cups into trays, and then every tray gets filled with, or every cup gets filled with soil. So I had to make sure every cup was the good, was had enough soil. Every cup got a dibble, which is like a, an impression of the amount, so whether it's a tree or a mono. Then it would go through va- the vacuum seeders, and I'd have to make sure every seed had a seed, or every pot had a seed. Or if it was a trio, every pot did the trio. Okay. There was different type, different varieties that need to go through, and so I quality controlled that. I would make sure everything was done by the end of the day. You know, I'd basically be 
boss at it and ah, get it done. And then dope. I moved up into into the greenhouse where I would call quality control the lettuce and make I'd look for mutations, watch for the watch for different uh, de- deficiencies, l- like look at the plants, you know, be observant, mm-hmm. um, you know, like uh, make be be efficient with my time. And um, I graduated, and then I was moved into a di- more of a different position where I became an inventory lead. So I became more in control of the raw, all the raw goods and thing consumables that would come in and out of the the facility, and including like the packaging and getting that under control and different things like that. So I got to move into a bit of a different role. Um, then I was just feeling like I wanted to move on a bit. Thank you. Yeah. And I was really wanting to get into the cannabis industry. So actually one of the p- supplier guys I was uh, dealing with said, ah, you, I think you could be a general manager or work re- be something more uh, than what you're doing now. And he's and I was like, you know what? I w- really want to be in the cannabis industry. He's like, well, you should go see what's available in your position now in the cannabis industry. Really? Yeah. And then I went on and I went to check online and I looked in for my position and there were some positions available in the inventory for, yeah, for, yeah. So I, I applied and uh, I actually got a call back for a higher position than the one I applied for. Okay, what was the position? Bring the mic up a little so bit. So I for applied you. for an inventory coordinator position. Just push it a little forward. Right. Yeah, and yeah. then after that, um, they they offered me an inventory specialist position. Okay, so now what, what's the difference between like the inventory well, inventory specialist? So we are a paper based company, so that the coordinator does the paperwork part, and then um, and some more of the grunt work of moving the moving the canvas in and out of the vault. And then for and then for me, I uh, get the paperwork and I just data twist log the it. Mic Sorry, way. just twist it. I, there. Bam. 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 I yeah. data <laughs> I d- and then I just data log that data into the computer all from all the paperwork and make sure that it's available for the company to have. So, but are you system. you're looking at the cannabis? Did you say you're? Lo- well, I can see the cannabis. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. It, yeah. yeah, it's cool, and I get the opportunity to see how it is and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, because you said you get to see all the big bags, and all the craziness, yeah, right? I, I do. Get, cool. I do get to see big bags <laughs> of cannabis. Yes. But a lot of it's sort of like the data. Yes. And, and then but what my it, job is data. Yeah. Data. Yeah. Data. Yeah. And what what are you like entering? Like, what is it like that you're just. Just the amount of totes and like things, okay. just because like, cause it has to be organized in a coding fashion, right? So everything okay. just needs to be organized. So it's just keeping track of the cannabis. Keeping track so of the cause, cannabis. Because, you, you know, like input. it's Health yeah. Canada standards. Totally. Right? Yeah, it's going to be heavy. Yeah. So everything has to be Health Canada standard. So we have to make sure we keep track of everything. Every gram, every bottle, everything that's toted. Wow. Right. So we, we are following the rules. Of course. Yeah, you got to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I it, I really take my job seriously, and I and I I really like think that like we can change like I know there's a lot of bad stigma in the legal industry, but we can change that, and we are just so young, like totally. and like I like being part of it, and I and I think that I would like like this company to excel, and honestly, like I remember seeing this company being at Hempfest when I went to the very first Hempfest. And I remember saying, looking at this company and going, I'm going to work here someday. Whoa. You're that impressed so, by the company. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And so like, I like, I really want, like, don't, don't want that. I don't want this company to look upon, like if they see this interview to look upon me in any negative connotation. Cause I think that they need to know that this, they are a great fucking company. Yeah. Totally. And there's a lot yeah. of good companies out there. Like I've, I've said it many times. Uh, like Aurora is like one of my favorite CBD brands. Yeah. Um, I think they make, like I've tried a lot of different CBDs. Um, but I think they have some of the highest quality CBD in my opinion. And they list their terpene profile, the cannabinoids, mm-hmm. which is all really nice. Yeah. Um, can I can I take you back to like kind of some of the medical aspects I guess of cannabis also in my life? Like yeah, I, I actually was. Yeah. I've ha- I actually have had an issue with my hip for a long time. Oh, so, really? Yeah, and like wa- when I walk, it hurts and I it clicks. Whoa! So I actually no started way. using CBD while I was using um while I was like uh in university too. So yeah. like I also like like just like you saying CBD. Like yeah, CBD is amazing, and I I uh, I think. Like I haven't even tried any of the le- many of the legal CBD products because I d- I don't know I just uh just don't use it very much anymore because no, I, I don't walk around anymore and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, um, 
I, I just remember I actually got my medical card and I remember how easy it was for me to go in there because I was like going in just being like, I want safe access. Totally. Like yeah. Just, some quality stuff. Cause yeah, that's very, that's yeah. the hardest thing to get is good quality CBD on the market. Yeah. Cause there's so much crap out there. Yeah. And I mean like, and even that's a really good segue into like, sort of like the last little part that I want to chat about um, here is really quality control and really like just how to choose like, a good cannabis like uh and how to choose like and even cbd yeah because like it's you know don't go buy your stuff off amazon or um you know it's some random person or at yeah. some random hemp store or something like that um you know you you really want to do your research on the cbd that you're uh, that you're purchasing yeah um and so even buying like cbd flour is kind of hard to come come by yes. i feel like here in yes. Canada. like i have some of my girls up in Lethbridge who like one my one friend toasted princess she really likes the CBD well, and yeah. she uses it a lot cuz she she doesn't she doesn't I think smoke weed and go like smoke THC weed and go to a school but she definitely does the CBD yeah. and like she's always struggled to get access especially at fair pricing like it's pretty expensive. It is. Yeah. It, it is. Oh, well, actually, I can give it. I can actually give a tip to everyone out there. If you're looking for some uh, some really reasonable CBD, Redican has 40 milliliter bottles for like fifty dollars a piece. Like it's sort of like a little secret, but like yeah, this I probably like don't want to tell everyone. Or, like, it's yeah. Redican's LP. They're a licensed producer. Yeah, okay. it's a tincture. See, it's not a, a weed, they, but yeah. Oh, the you're, you're looking for like, ch- yeah, like well, yeah. She like weed. wants flour, like it's the flour. Yeah, thing. it's it's very hard to come by the good flour. But like, and so like speaking of that, like what what we would like to do is sort of let people know, just like just a rundown of like even how to pick a good weed, and like what I want to do is just sort of go through like what shitty weed looks like which everyone calls lows what you know medium weed looks like which everyone calls mids and what like you know higher quality looks like Mm -hmm. um like i've made i've made a small list of like a few of my checkpoints and tell you what i'll list them off and all that and then you can sort of chime in or 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 whatever um like and now a a big distinction i want to make um between um lows mids and highs is there's quality and then that's also like the placement of the bud um so when you have a cannabis plant there's going to be buds obviously all over the plant but the buds at the lowest part of the plant those are going to be um basically the least mature they're gonna be the most immature buds and generally those buds are gonna be much smaller um their trichomes are gonna be a little bit whiter a little bit clearer which is gonna produce a little bit more of a little bit more of an anxious kind of like sativa like effect because uh, they're just not ripe Mm -hmm. and as you go up the stalk the medium buds become a little bit riper but really the ripest best buds are our colas those Those are going to be the truest uh expression of the cannabis plant um and now the other lows mids and highs would just be quality right yeah um but that's um it all kind of has it all it all kind of ties into each other now like the biggest thing like when i'm looking at like really like crappy weed like one thing it's generally going to be dry it's (laughs) dry fluff i like i if it's like fluffy or cloudy or like it's like you know like there's air in between it yeah Yeah, oh yeah like the buds where it's all (laughs) stringy and shit Yeah. yeah but like i don't know like for me i really like orange bright orange hairs Bright orange like, hairs, yeah. yeah. Like that, when I, anything with that, I'm like, ooh. Well, and that's when you start getting into the mids. You start probably yeah. seeing some bright orange hairs in the mids. Because, like, most of, like, when you're looking at a really lower quality weed, you're definitely going to see a far less complex appearance. It's going to be generally either, sometimes it'll be brown or, like, the green. Yeah, yeah. The green will be, like, it's, like. um. I definitely got the opportunity to see some brown. Like, I did get the opportunity at my work to, like, experience, like, something where like some of the growers got to come in and like they were like kind of assessing the weed and i actually got to see like kind of a bit more on how they do that and they like they definitely were like that one's too brown yeah you don't want to so anything brown or if you see like or if it looks like a very light green it means that there's uh, a lot of oxidations taking place and and you really don't want that it means the cannabis is not fresh um and it's going to be quite harsh um you know and that, that that's a main thing to look for and another thing is you're not really going to see probably a lot of trichomes on like a lower 
looking cannabis. Like mm-hmm. you might see a few, but they're probably gonna be sparse. Yeah, um, you'll probably cool. right yeah. like they're gonna or they're gonna like far and few between. And another thing is like you also find like like you said the cannabis to be leafy or stringy yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So if you ever get some leafy stringy stuff, like you know you're definitely um you know like you want those tight dense pack like. Oh. yeah but beautiful nugs yeah, yeah. right like and then another thing is just bud size like generally like mm-hmm. when you're getting lows like on the lower quality scale you're getting those smaller sort of tinier Tiny. little nugs yeah. from the bottom of the plant that has very uh, has a least amount of cannabinoids like a least amount of nugs that are like like if, like if they're like that round it's okay but like oh oh like right yeah like yeah, you at least like medium, a couple inches to large, and you're you're getting like mid to upper part of the plant. No, I mean I listed off a few things. What else is there? Anything maybe just off the top of your head before we move into what mids would look like? Like what else do you have? Anything that you would like? Okay, that would be really bad. Like well, I guess powdery mildew. That's yeah, a yeah. you'd want to look for that. Can you explain powdery mildew to people a little bit on that you might find on some lower quality weed? Often it's found in the stem area too, and it's um like it's white, and you gotta like you really have to look, Ugh. and that's the thing is it's like it's for me I feel like I've never really had the opportunity to really see it, and so I and I'm a visual learner so like I would re- I would really like I haven't seen it really yet in any buds because I've always had really good sources. Ah, <laughs> nice, but it um, is a thing that you have thing, to be yeah, aware and you should of. Check, yeah. like, and the, yeah, it's definitely when you break it, it's like in the stem area is the best place to take a look in for it. If, if I if that's what I remember correctly. Totally. Yeah. 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 Like, so like lower quality weed, like just to recap, um, it's going to be very, uh, very light colored or brown. Um, it's going to generally have a very low, low, low moisture content. It's going to be very dry. Oh yeah. Um, it's going to be generally machine trimmed. So it's going to be lacking a lot of the trichomes or it's going to be have little trichomes in general. Um, it's going to have very little um bud structure the buds are gonna be basic round for me it's always feel like about feeling the weed like just feeling (laughs) you just know like you feel it and it's just like oh that's the thing for us we do know that but for the average consumer these are things that like they're just they don't really know so it's good to have kind of like a checklist to look for so you should also smell is really important well smell yeah yeah, like if there's no smell there's no smell it's like because you want to smell some terpenes in there and some some stuff off there. You want something that's like, like sometimes at my work there are like certain strains that come in like all they're bagged up, but you look like open the tote that it's in and you can smell it. Yeah, totally. And it smell and you're like, mm, that's a good one. And that and that brings us into the mids where you actually would start smelling some stuff because yeah. like yeah, most of the lower quality weed you're not going to get much smell. There's gonna it's gonna be oxidized. It's gonna be garbage. Yeah. But when you start getting into some mids, then yeah, you're start you're going to get some more complex oh. bud structure, some more complex smells, no. um, different looks on the trichome or of uh, of the. I would say more tighter buds. Yeah, much more, tighter yeah, buds. Um, yeah hairs different colored hairs and you know yeah i i don't know like i i don't know i feel like i've been smoking and seeing a lot of really nice high quality bud then because like i get a lot of really good color like i've been smoking a lot of buds with purple and pink in them and um yeah. Well, and that's and that's and that's that's re- so. It's here's the thing, loops. but that's that's really what differentiates it, right? Because mids and highs both will have decent color and terpenes, but what separates mids and highs uh, is is the true checklist, right? Um, so, like, yeah, because your mids are gonna smell a little better. You're gonna get the flavors, and a lot of people will confuse mids with highs. Like, that's a big thing. A lot of people think their mids okay. are fucking highs, but their mids ain't highs. Your mids are fucking mids. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> straight up, like, when because when you are looking at mids, it is deceiving because you can look at it like, man, this smells bomb, and look at the trichomes. Yeah, there's trichomes all over it. But if you really are a connoisseur and you're lo- really looking, you ought to dive a little bit deeper into it. So if if you're and looking... How- 
how deep is that? Oh, are not you talking about the magnifying glass and looking at how amber those trichomes might be? Slightly, <laughs> slightly. We're getting there. Like if I was looking at a high quality cannabis, like I, so let's say, okay, let's cover mids. So let's say mids. Mids is going to be a little bit more fruity. You're going to have some more flavor. It's going to be a little bit more green, a little bit brighter, a little bit nicer nug structure, um, you know, um and and l greater trichome coverage on your mids but now your highs that's a big separator your highs are going to be hand trimmed not machine trim this way mm. you're not compromising okay. trichomes okay they're also highs are not going to be vac sealed they're going to be stored in jars or they're going to be stored in in bags that aren't vac sealed because vac sealing destroys cannabis heads destroys okay. the trichome stock and head just obliterates I've it. I've definitely been smoking the highs then. Okay, because you yeah. want it. So when you're looking. Because the person that I get mine from, like, yeah, he, I, he had a rant like this before to me like a week ago. Well, yeah, like, and if he's a, if he's a grower and shit, like, this is huge. Yeah. It's called, like, uh, the, uh, people call it, like, molestation of the trichomes. Yeah, like straight up. So so you want to be looking for rich, large trichomes. You should literally see the trichome stalk and head yeah. coming off it. And like and the bigger the better. Um another thing is too with like a really high quality cannabis, you're gonna see wild variations in the bud structure based on the phenotype it is. Yeah, like fox tailing and stuff. Like oh that. yeah, all yeah. kind. You can see like triangle things and yeah. weird but but you'll still find really tight the buds will still be yep. Yep. super rock hard. Super super tight and another thing is the trichome coverage is unlike anything you've ever seen because when you see mids yeah it's covered in these little trichomes that look like little specks little white specks and shit but when you see some highs some true quads and you're looking at hundreds of thousands of trichomes popping out of this freaking thing it looks like some off an alien movie like or some shit you know you're smoking some high quality cannabis um and i mean you know that's pretty much my list. Uh, hand trimmed, not vac sealed. Um, you know, fully intact trichomes. Um, very, f very rich terpene uh, yeah. profiles uh, and like dynamic terpene pro profiles, where it's almost like to the point where it's like a wine, where you're smelling, yep. you know, dozens oh of different my gosh. flavors. Oh That's my gosh. that is your high quality cannabis right there. Um, and, and do you got any additions to maybe how you would, uh, I don't know, some high quality cannabis? I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like I'm looking at high quality cannabis right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're smoking nothing but fire here. We got fucking, <laughs> yeah. This is. I, I'm, no, I definitely. Organic living soil. <laughs> I'm going to say that you knocked it out of the park, like with like what you had to say. Because I definitely would agree, and that now you're making me really like reflect on some like the weed I have been smoking. I'm like, holy crap, man! I'm, be I'm getting like good, good shit. I'm getting good weed. I'm getting like, I don't, yeah, man. I'm getting gifts. And if you're <laughs> getting that's a, that's a trick, guys. You want to get from growers and stuff because growers aren't going to vac seal your shit. They're going to fucking just give it to you in a jar. It's yeah. going to look beautiful. Um, and another thing is like, you don't know that you're smoking some fucking swag till you see better weed either. You know, it yeah. wasn't like I do. I thought I was smoking highs for years. Then I found out I was smoking mids and then, and then, and then, you know, you find, you just find better and better and, um, and then you learn. Right. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cannabis is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah, and there's is. so, and there's so, it's so easy to learn about. There's so much information. Um, speaking of that, I got a science show that's, yeah. uh, going to be coming out or it's probably already released by the time this podcast comes out. Um, as well as a new show that, uh, <laughs> is already released too. Well, oh, by the time this podcast comes out, I'll probably have like five or six like news episodes. Jeez. The, there's the man of many episodes. I know. Go, right? go. Jeez. No, the stuff is a ton of fun. Uh, yeah. yeah, and like, uh, yeah, making content is a ton of fun. I can't wait to, um, you know, yeah. see what the future looks and like. And speaking of that, like, where do you see like the future of cannabis? Like, what do you what do you think like the next year or so is going to look like? What do you think this year is going to look like? Well, well, in Alberta, we just had vapes released and for sale, so that's interesting. To I think see. we'll see these consumption lounges. I like I would. I would like to see that happening, yes. I would hope so. And I would hope that, like, the government will see that, like, why, I don't know, like, we were allowed to go consume alcohol somewhere. What's so wrong with us going to 
vape and like even dabbings like dabbings like vaping i know right it's like, totally it's totally vaping i know like, it doesn't even with, smell that bad and some of the nice stuff you can get like live resin and different types of stuff like it they're really terpy and like have really nice smells and they're not as some of them aren't as like that you know that i guess that weedy skunky tone of smell so it's like i don't know like i think it's like I don't know. I I just really like the vibe and the like the aura a lot. Like lots of stoner people give off, and we're I think mm. we're a very calm and complex community, and that we're actually very in, interested in networking and being a a pro group to the community. Mm -hmm. And like I'd also like to see like I'm really in, interested in the environment. So like for some of the group of people in Lethbridge, like I'm trying to get a group together for us to do like a 420 cleanup and stuff like that. Okay. That'd and be like, cool. Yeah. So I'm just trying to see like, um, more different pro out outlooks of, I guess, our type, our community and our culture. Do you think you'll push for, um, anything for trying to get your zero net, um, sort of maybe a mini, mini grow thing out this year or something so, like that, or an idea for it? Well, I, I know that there's some people out there who are trying to promote like uh, grow sheds that are like with solar panels and stuff. Yeah. So my thought was like, if I can get something like that going and then find some, uh, get somewhere where I can look into doing some type of subterranean heating system. Oh yeah. Even on the small scale, just yeah, enough for a little my, shed. Um, and you like awesome. I do have my medical, so I could grow a little bit larger scale if I wanted to. Yeah. It's just really all about like having money. <laughs> of course. Funds to do that, and I just need maybe to a GoFundMe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Go fund me up and I will be getting a net zero, like straight up. I would love to do you ever that. Think, like, me, write a plan. I think write I, a... I actually, write you a, know, I actually had a conversation with someone about that. And like I was thinking about actually, because I know like the ATB and certain BMOs, they have like entrepreneurial centers. I know and oil I was, guys out here that would probably fucking back. Like if you had like a really, because you got a degree yeah, and gotta, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you gotta, God, just got a good business plan. But I lack totally. the business I lack the business. Just got to write it up, write it up, yeah. write a game plan out of how I you would know. do it. Because that could be super powerful. You got the knowledge like that's and that's super unique. Think about hey, it. Maybe, maybe you could make sheds that you sell for like 20 G's or like maybe five grand or yeah. something like that. And it's all maybe I'll leave here inspired enough today to actually put plan into action. Do it. I think that'd be great. Yep. Well, Canna Kitty, this is an awesome podcast. I think uh, everyone learned a lot. Um, I really appreciate you inviting me to do this. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I appreciate you coming on. It was it was a great it was great. I think you shared a ton of information. I think you had even way more to share than I even thought. Um, no, it was cool. I think I can pick your brain for a lot longer. It's a shame we only have uh, so much time here. Yep. Um, but yeah, why don't you tell everyone like where uh, they can find you and locate your uh, social yeah, media and for all sure. that? Um, my Instagram handle is canna kitty yql and yeah uh, that's you that's where you can find me <laughs> i am pretty active on there on my stories and stuff and you can see me dab up on my peak yeah. and uh oh, i don't really have many dab rigs anymore because i broke them but you know <laughs> in the future here hopefully you'll see me dab up on some new pieces when i get them i'm scouting out a really cool cat bong to you know oh, yeah. get in with my canna kitty uh theme and you know you can always see me getting litty in the windy city <laughs> ah, nice nice yeah, left bridge girls, yeah. <laughs> yeah all that why don't you uh shout out with other girls on uh, yeah and if you're on the instagram really check out uh my girl toasted princess and blazing canadian and happy hippie hand oh shit yeah yeah and uh they're my girls and also yeah token tiny up in edmonton she's one of our girls too that we she came down to hemp fest last year with us and nice. we'll probably be at hemp fest this year and yeah it'll be good sweet yeah. sweet yeah. cool guys well you got it uh thanks for joining us another uh elevated uh podcast i mean this is dope as hell and uh yeah join us for the next one uh, we'll have some more science and uh goodies and another cool guest for you thanks for joining us guys thanks bye-bye